I'm going to be talking really about athletic development theory and application. Now, listen, I said this in the class before. This is a real watered down approach. Now, if you, if you talk to anyone who knows me, if you watch my videos, half an hour for me is literally three minutes to anyone else. So I can talk, and I, especially with my passion, I can talk a lot on this. So I'll try and make it as quick as possible so we can get in some sort of practical. But I need to give you guys some sort of overview before we start. Oh, I could be right. So now... If you don't, does anyone know who Vern Gambetta is? Anyone follow Vern Gambetta? If you don't, and if you've got a pen and paper, write down his name. Um, he's a USA strength and conditioning coach. He's one of the best in the game. He's been doing it for 40 years. This quote sums up everything I believe in terms of athletic development. I'm just going to read it out to you. Enhancing athletic performance is straightforward and basic. So keep it basic. Remember, injury prevention is an implicit and transparent part of a sound training program, not the focus. Emphasize what the athlete can do at a level appropriate to their trainability. Now, does anyone know what I believe in terms of training the athlete? Like if anyone put up your hand, does anyone know my focus really with training? Like I'm not really in any bull, and I'm gonna slide up next. I'm very simplistic with my methods. Very, very simplistic. You don't, you know, a lot about training, especially in this industry, is to do with gimmicks. Everything's about gimmicks. I'm really against that. I'm very basic and simplistic. Um, and I think one thing about this industry at the moment, it's all geared towards how many likes they can get on Facebook or Instagram. It's not about fundamental training. And that's kind of what we're trying to bring it back to as much as possible. Now, the next slide. Now, this is me being an idiot. Um, as you can see, I'm on a football. Everything these days is about, I don't know if you guys kind of see, um, on Facebook and Instagram, but everything's about standing on a fit ball, standing on, do you guys know what a BOSU ball is? Yeah? So I'm kind of against it. These days, like I've seen a video, two, three videos, people send me all these stupid videos, but it's people jumping onto a box, like a step box with a BOSU ball on top of it. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it, really? So I want you guys to remember everything that you guys do. And do you guys, do any of you guys work in sport? Like you guys have got your own clinics? Put your hand up if you, any of you guys work with athletes. No? Okay, some of you. So everything we do um, is always looking risk first ward, everything. Okay, so always remember what, if you're choosing an exercise or you're doing something like jumping on a box, always, number one, you have to look at their training status, so how long they've been training for. The second thing is you always wanna look at risk first reward. What is the risk of this exercise? What is the reward? Now, let's use common sense. If the risk outweighs the reward, okay, the risk outweighs the reward, you're probably not gonna do it, are you? So I think a big thing, part of our training is being, being um, and I call it a lot, I say it a lot, um, common sense is not really common in my industry, not at all. So we need to start using common sense, sticking to the fundamentals as much as possible. And I'm gonna go through what the fundamentals are in a second. Okay, why is athletic, athletic development so important? So the first one, which I talk about all the time, is injury reduction. Now, a lot of people might say injury prevention. Unfortunately, we can't fully prevent injuries. Okay, it's a fact of life. If they play sport, sports chaotic, we can't prevent injuries. All we can do is reduce the chance of happening with proper strength conditioning, okay, as much as possible. The second thing which we want to look at is the performance. So everyone talks about jumping high, running quicker, and this kind of goes back to the first point, but there's no point of developing the athletic in terms of strength, power, speed, if they're injured the whole time. So pretty much the reason why we do this is to keep them healthy. And if we, and the way I see it is if we keep them healthy, we keep them playing, they've got, and especially with the athletes that we train, we train a lot of athletes that either A, go on to pro sport, B, are playing sp pro sport, or they go on the college system. If we can develop the physical attributes, because I want you to think a triangle effect, especially with it. There's a physical side, a technical tactical side, and a psychological side. Every sport has some sort of physical component. Even if it's lawn bowls, even though you might think lawn bowls has no physical component, it does have some sort of physical component that we need to develop. Okay, now if we can develop the physical side, we're gonna maximize the technical tactical side, and then the psychological side comes with it as well. So all three sides are important, but I talk about this with my boys a lot, is if we can develop what, and I want you to think, and I'll ask you guys, and I said this before in the last um, lecture I gave. Athletic development is universal. What I mean by that is, would a baseball player and a basketball player both look to improve their lower body strength, lower body power? Yes or no? Well, it makes sense, yes. So it's kind of universal in that, in that case. But, and I say this a lot when, when, when I actually do talks, 
there's gonna be, ex I understand there's gonna be exercise more specific to that sport than certain others, but in general, everything we do in the weight room or outside that is just what we call GPP, general physical preparedness. Can you guys guess what the only true way of sports specific conditioning is or sports specific training is? You guys wanna take a guess? What would it be? The sport itself, thank you. Yes, the sport itself, very true. But we kind of get caught up on this fact in this industry, it's all about gimmicky, like for some reason, and I'll go back to this slide. I don't know why, but people think that when you stand on a BOSU ball or you stand on a fit ball, that makes it sport specific. It doesn't make it sport specific whatsoever. Until the day we're playing sport on fit balls or BOSU balls, I'm gonna keep programming ground-based movements. Okay, because when, when athletes play court sports or field-based sports, they're applying force into the ground. They're not applying force into a BOSU ball. They're not applying force into a fit ball. Okay, that's not sport specific. The only true way of sport specific conditioning is, or sport specific training is the skill itself. Everything else is just GPP. Now, in saying that though, there are gonna be, more, there are gonna be exercises that are more sport specific than others. So an example, a squat is gonna be more sport specific than a bicep curl. Okay, a compound multi-joint movement that's ground-based is gonna be more specific than isolation. Do you guys get that? Yep. Okay, so always remember that it's everything's risk versus reward, and always you always wanna, especially when you train the athlete, we're always looking for big bang for your buck movements because for me, I might only have two hours a week. I'm not gonna waste my time isolating or curling when I need to get my big compound movements that are gonna to lead to a lot of transference on the sport. But also, I said this before, it's gonna reduce injury. So if we, if we build robust athletes, they're not gonna get injured, and we develop the physical competency, they're gonna perform better, which brings me to my last point, which is the big one as well. If they, if they feel better, and physically they do feel better, they're gonna perform better. Psychologically, they're gonna feel better. So it's gonna give them confidence, which is a big one. And um, I deal with a lot of rehab, ACL rehab, hamstring rehab as well. I'll, and I, I said to the boys when we were in the car before, half of our, and we talk about this later, but. What we do is half art, half science, okay? It's not all science, a bit of art as well. And this brings back to half of what my job is communication, relationship building, and building that confidence with them, especially rehab. Okay, it's a big one as well. Now, I talk about methods are many, principles are a few. So a lot of people when I talk, and I call them gurus in this industry. There's, and I didn't say this at the start, which I should have. There's many ways you can do this. Okay, my way's not the only way. Trust me, I've, I've seen a plethora of ways you can do it. But as long as you're applying fundamental sports science principles in a practical sense, and you can justify it with science and art, you're fine. But a lot of people in this industry, they, they're guru, they'll be like, that's the only way you should squat. That exercise is bad. That exercise is good. It doesn't work like that. You need to choose a variant, choose a method that works for your athlete or your client. The best method is the one that works for the client. Do you guys understand that? So don't worry about what anyone says. Like there's, there's some people who say, oh, I'll give you an example. Full range squats are good. Quarter squats are bad. Half squats are bad. Full range squats are good. There's context to everything. Always remember there's context. I'll give you an example, and I've said this before. There's always an ongoing debate about squats, full range squats versus quarter squats and half squats. In my opinion, every squat has its place. Every squat has its place. All comes down to context. I do with a lot of athletes which have some sort of what we call hip pathology, it's an like FAI. Um, so they've got structural issues with their hips. They cannot go past 90 in a squat, they cannot. Now if you do that, they're gonna have issues. They won't be able to play their sport. So me full range squatting them is stupid. So I still wanna develop some sort of lower body strength, lower body power. So with those guys, they might squat to 90 or they might even quarter squat depending on what time of season they're in. So saying they're full range squatting is incompetent. So you kind of start to see when people look at something, they don't know the context behind it. They don't know their training status. They don't know the time of the season. They don't know they've got some sort of stru structural abnormality. Okay, always remember, context is critical. Now I want to talk to you about three principles that are really important, and I'm going to get you, um, the young, uh, my young guys, to take you guys through um, a little bit of application. I'm going to get you guys up doing some sort of activation. Um, and it's got implications for you guys um, so when, you, when you're with um, podiatry, when you put them, and just to, guys, I didn't say this in the last one, I was going to, but I've actually um, had terrible feet for years and I actually went and saw, I've had these orthotics, seriously. It's serious, serious. I've had these orthotics and I forgot to show you, I was gonna bring it up, but I had these for years, like nine years, I'm telling you. 
And I'm not just saying this to you guys because you guys are podiatrists, but I buy into what you guys do because everything starts from the feet. Am I correct? Yeah? I'm not, I'm not just saying that. I'm being serious. Everything starts on the feet. I'll give you an example. I had a soccer player, right? And his gait was stuffed. And I couldn't work it out. I'm thinking to myself, what the hell is the matter with the kid? I worked on his glutes, worked on his mobility, worked on his lower body strength, lower body power. And he's feeling good for a while. And then I watched him walk. And I've got a basic understanding because I've been on orthotics for nine years and I've dealt with um, podiatrists before, is if you watch his feet, and majority, as you guys, I'm preaching the choir here, but a lot of people pronate in, roll in. And I said, mate, you need to see a podiatrist straight away. The first thing I do, saw this podiatrist within two weeks, no issue. So I'm not just saying it to you guys because, you know, you're podiatrist, but everything the way I see it starts from the feet. But you need to rehab up and down the chain or do some sort of rehab. And that's where this is going to be really applied to you guys where you can do some sort of glute activation is a big one because if you can activate the glute, you're going to stabilise the hip. You're not going to have problems down the chain, which is so critical for anyone, anyone in general, but also the athlete as well. I'm gonna quickly go over three um, principles that I want you guys to understand. The first one is overload. Okay, now you can overload the stress on the individual, the athlete, a number of ways. A lot of people think the best way of doing it is load. Um, it doesn't have to always be load. It can be intent, it can be speed, it can be volume, okay, it can be frequency, it can be tempo, it can be exercise selection. There are ways you can overload the stress. Okay, the most simplest way is lift heavier weight at quicker movement speed. Okay, a lot of people try and get too fancy. You don't need to get too fancy in this game. Second one, specificity. I want you to remember adaptation is task specific. How you train affects how you adapt to the muscle group, the motor pattern, the joint angle, the contraction type, the contraction velocity, the metabolic pathway. Everything is specific. I'll throw that to you guys. If you wanna, if you wanna prove on a back squat, what would you do? You'd back squat. If you wanna jump high, what would you do? You'd jump. If you wanna sprint faster, what would you do? You'd sprint faster or you'd sprint. But there's obviously other ways, like you want to get stronger, stuff like that. But specificity would say, okay, I was talking about one of my younger boys, my uh, younger football boys, he said, I want to prove it at 20. He said, I'm doing all this work, you know, squatting, which is fantastic because we know acceleration is correlated with relative strength. You apply more force and ground. But I said, have you done any sprint work or technique work? No, I haven't. Well, that's the first thing you want to look at in terms of specificity. So very important. Adap always remember adaptation is task specific. The last one and the third one is individualization. Now, this is a big one. And you see in my industry a lot where someone comes out and plan, they go, this program helped, I'll give you an example, this program improved my strength X, it helped me lose this much body fat, it got me stronger, right? Just because it worked for X won't work for A. What works for A won't work for B. You need to find what works for every individual person. Now, there's gonna be a method to your madness in terms of for Woodford training systems that we use. We have a structure and a basic template we work towards and then we make it specific to each individual. So generally, and that's through experience as well, theory and experience. So what I kind of work on is I work off a template in my own head. Um, you probably don't want to know what's going on in my head right now, but I work off a general template and what I do through my, and I've, talk, I've told you two this before, off my experience, I'll go that, that will work, that won't work, that will work, that won't work, and I just pick and choose. That's individualization. So you're going to work to a general, um, a general overview in terms of general, generally what's gonna work, and then you're gonna specifically make it depending on each individual. Now, what we're gonna do now, I want you two to take them through activation just to start. So, we're gonna get you guys up. It's the last lecture of the day. I wanna get you up. We wanna work on some, some sort of activation. Now, you guys can use this at your clinics. It's fantastic use. It's simple and effective. So, I'm gonna leave you guys with Brett and Alex to take you guys through activation. So, everyone coming up. All right, guys, all our lateral steps. So, I want everyone to get into this position here. Their hips are back, knees slightly bent, and their hands like that. All that's going to happen when I say go, you're going to be pushing up this back leg, step me across, and step me up again, bring those feet together. What we don't want is for these feet to come right together, we've got to keep tension in those bands, and we don't want to start dragging that back foot, back foot across there. So we want to make sure it's a step across and down. Through that step, we should feel that much working as we move across. So keep those feet pointing forward the whole time, step across, make sure we're not banging into each other. Put your hands on our butt so we can feel that activation. Good guys, good. Reach off the outside leg, keep your feet square. So keep stay square. As you guys may feel, the green ones, they're the harder ones. The yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say the green ones are the harder ones. You probably should we probably should have told you guys at the start the green ones are the thicker ones, the black ones are lighter ones, less resistant. Sorry, our fault. It is funny to watch that. It is funny to watch that. So the green ones are the thick, and just let you guys know, these are new, so there's no give in them. 
There's no give. So if you're thinking this is hard, there's no giving them. These are new. <laughs> there's no give. Come on the side. Now I'm going to come and adjust some of you to fix the position, like feet in line. Yes, good. Relax the head over your arm. Just roll through, just sandwich people. Above, okay. just come up. Come up, watch this. Come up, 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 up. You're feeling through there? Yep, good. hold me, resist. Now resist, come on, resist. Come on, resist. Come on, resist. Come on, resist. Come on, Keep going, keep going. Yes, good boy, nice, very nice, good, very good. That's good. Hold here. So you come up, 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 height. Now resist me, resist. Hold, hold, hold. Come on, come on, come on, come on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, don't stop, don't stop, rest, good work, nice, good, hard, eh, hard, eh, how hard is it, eh, come up, 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 resist, resist, it's not too bad, it's not too bad, keep holding, keep holding, keep holding, keep holding, good job, good work, nice, good, change sides, change sides, I do, um, good me burn out as well for two minutes, just getting hold too. Yeah, yeah, go through 10, <laughs> now, what we're going to do on a sum of you is what you can do is you can lift that knee up and you can, to add more resistance, push out against my hand. Good. And that glute will just fire up. And that is a great way to test someone's glute mead strength. <laughs> the stronger this glute mead and glute min and the whole glute complex, generally, so I'm going to do it again. <laughs> you do up, every day, do it every day. <laughs> Every day, do it, seriously. You feel what it's... You feel better, like I promise you, like we get guys who sit down the whole day for about eight hours, and what we like to do, the first thing we do is get them to, if they've got no structure issues with their hip, they find that full range squat, that's what I mean. They'll come in, full range squat, just to get that hip mobility, and then we activate their glute, glute, meat, glute, max. Straight away, they feel so much better. But I do that every day, so I do what, what I call, so I'll come into work. I might be stiff to the back when I start. I'll grab a, pretend there's a rack here. I squat down, full range. So we sh all you guys should be able to do this. Like I haven't warmed up or anything, but you should be able to squat. You should be able to full range squat without, but we live in a, an age right now where everyone sits down too much, they're tight their hips. You don't yeah. have to. You can and that's the issue. So what I do is I'll do a rack squat, full range, and I hold that position for about five minutes, which you just sink, sink, sink. I'll do diaphragmatic breathing. So I inhale through my nose, exhale through my mouth. Yep. Slow and controlled. Then I'll do good activation and I'm good to go. And I might do some sort of something explosive at the start to fight my nervous system. Alright yes. guys, from there, last one we're gonna do is stand up for you. We're gonna do what we call a glute meat burnout. Oh, this, oh, this is yeah, this is gonna I'll be honest up. for for most of you girls with really, actually for everyone here, I'm not gonna lie, this is really gonna hurt, but it's doing you real good, I promise you you'll love it. And actually you'll hate it, but you'll love it at the same time. Head back to your chair for you. Go guys. to your chair guys. What you're do, sitting on the edge of your chair here. Arms crossed, leaning forward with a yeah. nice straight back. All I want us to do is just hold that position, push our legs out as hard as we can. So <laughs> knees are out, arms are up. And when we say knees right. out, that doesn't mean just external rotate with the feet, just pushing, <laughs> cheating. See, that's the difference. See, what you did was you just went external, yeah, that's as hard. You're cheating there. I want to push your abduction to the hip. There we go. Out, 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 out. out. There we go. Oh, out. Knees out, knees out. Come on, knees out, knees out. <laughs> Come on, Colin. You now, got hey, on my clock. You got two minutes. Go. <laughs> two minutes. You got two minutes. Come on, two minutes. I'll give you a minute. I'm kidding. One minute. Everyone's got one minute on my clock, and my minute is about two minutes. So there we go. <laughs> Come on, knees out. What we'll, what we'll do? Oh yeah. What we'll do? Ten seconds hard. Ten seconds relax. Ten seconds hard. Ten seconds relax. Because I won't get through it. You got. Oh, you love me and you hate me. What we'll do? I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. Keep holding. Okay, you can do it. Start now as hard as I can. Abduction. Ten seconds and relax. So that gives me. Listen up. Listen up. We're gonna push out as hard as we can for ten seconds. We're gonna have ten seconds rest. We're gonna go through a couple of rounds. Come on, man. You've got to really push hard here. You've got to abduct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two
Out. Hard, hard, hard. Go. Hard. Don't just accelerate with your feet. You guys know that. You're a podiatrist. You'll know that. You gotta abduct through the hips. Abduct. Come on. Out. Good. Come on. Out. 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 Here we go. Good. Nine. Eight. Seven. Keep going. Six. Yeah. Five. Four. Do you want a band? Do you want a band? You can't do it. Three. Two. And rest. Come back in. Okay. 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 Back out again. Go. Out. 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 Now what I normally do is I come around. He's got good sit strong sit up, sit up, sit up. Now. Uh, push push out. 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 And rest. We're going to do one more. One more. Three. Two. Out. Go. Out. Come on. Hard. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hold. 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 Ten. Nine. Out. Eight. Seven. Six, five, keep rolling. Four, 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 four. We're live at Wood. We're live on the Woodford Facebook. Rest. Good stuff. Nice work. Give yourself a cope, guys. It was good work. Great work. Now, I'm telling you guys right now, we've used that. Well, I, I, I kind of stumbled across that when. Um, you sit in a position right now called hip flexion. You guys all know that. What's switching off? Glutes. Okay, I'm telling you right now, and we, I've seen this for, well, I've been doing this 12 years, and someone will come in, and I see this most of the time, tight to their hips, um, so immobile through the hips, immobile through the ankles a fair bit, um, inhibited through their glutes. So anywhere you can get their glutes switched on, they're gonna feel a lot better. So I was saying to you before, in the morning, what I would do is I'd do a, a full range squat, and. If I got you guys to stand up right now and squat full range of motion, literally, and I haven't warmed up, like I should get Al, Al to do it. Have you warmed up at all? I'm good. Okay, so you should be able to get someone to do this straight away. And frontal plane on the side. What are you actually doing? Squat down, full range. Just squat, just okay. squat. No, but on the side so they can see. Sorry, so you can nice. see. So squat, knees out. See, that's night. Now, I don't, uh, you can go deeper. Go deeper, deep, deep. Stop there. See, now that's, that's past parallel. Now you watch me. Let's see if I can beat him here. No, no, stay there. So let's see if I can beat you. Who's got? Who's gone deeper? Who's gone deeper? Me or him? Yeah, but it's you, you don't need to worry when you when you a lot of people worry about flexion with the back. If it's unloaded, you're fine. If it's loaded, you've got issues. But that's unloaded. So you guys, should, if I got you to stand up and squat, I'd see a number of different squat patterns. Trust me, straight away. But um, also, the shoes are helping a lot. If I take these off, my, you're going to see uh, dysfunctions in my mobility, my ankles, my knees, my hips. Right? That's important to mention, podiatrists. Yeah, actually, that's, <laughs> that's true, actually. That's very good. Um, so, I mean, for, for us, I mean, the first thing that I look at is coming in the morning and make sure we have really good hip mobility. Um, also, this is a winner for all you guys. I'm telling you right now, if you guys do this and you do some sort of rehab with this, because um, if they do have flat feet, which the reason why I understand this so much is because I have terrible flat feet, and I've told you guys, I went and saw a podiatrist, and they pretty much explained everything to me. Um, once you're rolling in, anything up the down, especially up the chain, especially glute me, glute max, if you guys can do this, it's a win like that straight away. Okay, so I want you guys to try this with your client. Even if it's, you don't have to go that thick, you probably want to go a lighter resistance band. Obviously, that, this was at the higher end, but um, a, a lighter resistance band will do, you know, worlds of difference, especially up, up the chain for them when they're jumping, when they're sprinting, when they're changing direction. Does anyone have any questions about that activation we just did? Anything at all? No. Okay, what well, we're going to take them through now is um, a hinge pattern quickly, which is a big one. Yeah, you can demo. So what we're gonna do is, I want everyone to stand up for me, please. Um, now, does anyone know what an RDL is? A Romanian deadlift, okay? Some of you might, some of you, some of you might not. Um, we live in an anterior chain world. What I mean by that is when people go to the gym, they'll do stuff like this, squat, uh, leg press, lunge, split squat, step up, they're all quad dominant anterior chain, they're actually making the issue worse. What we wanna, what we wanna focus on, turn around, I just grab them like this is all I do, grab them. Um, the posterior chain, not just the upper back, but also the glutes, the hamstring, we're real big on this. Now, when someone first comes into Woodford, they're very quad dominant, what I mean by that is everything comes to a squat pattern. So can you show them just on the frontal plane, please, sir? Mm -hmm. Show them how, how, how would they hinge if we got them to hinge at Woodford? Now you see that straight away, their knees go forward, their trunk remains upright. Too quad dominant, okay? I'm gonna take you through how, how easy it is for you guys to coach a hinge. Like this is 
seriously, so, like so easy, so effective, and you can actually teach them that hinge pattern, which is so important, learning the hamstrings and glutes. Um, so how we're gonna do it, everyone hands on your quads like this, hands on your quads. Now I want you guys to watch Brett before we do this, right? So all he's gonna do is he's, grind, he's gonna grind his hands down to his kneecap, and his palm is gonna go straight to his kneecap, he's gonna hold that position. Now before we even do it, check this out, right? So, that's better, Brett. Um, <laughs> That's better, Brett. Um, I want to, how I do it, just let you guys know, if you're watching my videos, um, I'll sh grab them and put them in positions. If you're not comfortable with that, like a lot of people aren't comf comfortable with touching their clients, that's fine. For me, I've been doing it so long. When people um, come see me, they know what to expect. So for me, it's a little bit different. Like what I'll do is I'll grab them, shove them, neck down. Like, But that you don't have to do that, but that's how I like doing things. But as long as you see this, everything we do in the gym is training a joint angle, that's all it is. So it was a hip dominant pattern, it's shins vertical, trunk horizontal. Now, do you guys all see that? Shins vertical, trunk horizontal. Now, watch this. If you, you were to feel him, his hamstrings have heaps of tension. That's what we want. We actually use the RDL to load the posterior chain, the glutes and the hamstrings. Now, look, go to a squat pattern. Just there, how we see it. Just go to a squat pattern. No, 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 no. Like if they were to hinge and they do a squat pattern. Oh. So they'll do this, right? And this is completely wrong because that's switched off. That's useless. And what we use an RDL for a purpose, that's to load the hamstring. So their hips, how I would do it is their hips gotta be higher, shins are vertical, trunks horizontal. If I had a dowel rod, a dowel rod is like just a rod, three points of contact, head, scapula, coccyx. Now, the reason why we go to our, um, when we hinge, we only go to the knees, is because of the wrist first reward. Now, with females, what I've worked out is females can go deeper and they don't lose it through here. Males, terrible, horrendous. So I, literally with males, I'll go to their knee because the wrist outweighs the reward, literally. If I go deeper, they won't be able to control it through here. If they've got a flat back, you're okay. The minute they start losing, yeah, like losing a little bit through here, no good, tension is critical. So what we do, we pull them up, but men stay here. Now, my experience with the young fellas, what I say, the young coaches, what I say is, listen, I don't care if you've got someone with good mobility, just go to the knee every time. Now, if, it's, if you feel they're competent, we can go a little bit deeper, but if, you, if there's a gray area, come let, come let me see it, or one of the senior guys, and I'll tell you if you can go deeper. But I've had ballet dancers, um, uh, dancers in general, they can go real deep, and they've got real good lumbo pelvic control, really good mobility. So normally go here, you should only feel it through your hamstrings, right? That's the descent we control. Then when we come up the ascent up, which is critical as well, hips come through, we stand up now. That was very nice, Brett. Um, when we finish, we finish at neutral. So if we look at a straight line, that's why I've got him on, him on a frontal plane, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, ear, there's a straight line. He's not substituting hip extension, the main hip extensor, the first hip extensor of the body is the glutes. The second being the hamstring, which extend the hip also, flex the knee, right? The main hip extensor of the body is the glutes. Now think about this, for you guys, right? For anyone in general. If someone's damn regulated through here and they wanna sprint and jump, they're gonna have issues up the chain, either their back or their hamstrings, knees or hips. So it makes sense, that's why I wanted to show you activation. It's a winner for, for everyone. Doesn't matter athlete, non-athlete, it's a winner. But make sure they don't substitute hip extension for back extension, they're loading their lumbar spine. We don't want that, we wanna finish it neutral, squeeze. And the cue that I use, five cent piece between their ass and squeeze. Okay, now when they squeeze their butt, if they've got real good connection, their pelvis will tilt, uh, tilt posteriorly because the glutes have five functions and we went through them before. Abduct the hip, extend the hip, externally rotate the hip, tilt the pelvis posteriorly and the fifth one's a big one, it's to actually stabilize the hip. So for you guys, if you put them in orthotics and then you get the glute me to switch on in what I just showed you guys, you'll be seen as God to them. I'll tell you, I'm being serious, straight away, it's a big winner. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put our hands on our quads, we're gonna the young fellas to take you guys through it. I've showed you, Elle, yep. um, Brett, you're gonna take them through it, all right? So Off you go. Same position, guys, we've also been standing in about five minutes, and then we come up. Hands on our quads here, knees slightly bent, just like we're doing our activation before, and it's just hands straight down those quads, trying to get our palms over our kneecaps. Should immediately feel that straight through our hands into the back oh, sorry, there. Just hold down there for me. Now, Just making sure that back's nice and straight. Everyone look at your base. Make sure your feet are under your hips. Good. Because that is the most efficient biomechanical pathway to apply force into the ground. Feet under the hips. Think about where people jump from. So that's why we apply it to RDLs. And from there, guys, we're holding down. Like Christian said, it's hard. Squeeze that glute to the top. Make sure we're not arching that back. It's all hips, all glutes. Then we'll go down again. So run those hands down our quads again. Yeah, and hold that, make sure that the head is good. down. Really good, really good. As well. Good, we're feeling after our hamstrings, nice. lower back, so we feel nothing. Yes, yeah, yeah. All right, and up, squeeze, hips through, and two more. And again, hands over the knee. 
making sure that back is nice and straight. Nice. Shoulders are back. And press squeeze. And one more down again. Doesn't have to be quick to start, just to learn the skill. It is a skill. It can be slow hip extension, really slow. Come up slow, then just learn that extension at the top and squeeze your glutes hard. Doesn't have to be quick. You can slow it down just to really learn the movement. And up squeeze, really good. Awesome, now that's fine. Take a seat, guys. I'll just quickly end it on, um, if in doubt, always go back to the basics. If in doubt, go back to the basics. So I just really wanted to, look, this is, it's a very watered down version. I was saying to Lucy before that I could talk all day on this. So, you know, if you've got me here for nine, 10 hours, I'll talk for nine, 10 hours. So this is my passion. This is my true purpose in life. So it's really fantastic to see. I mean, you guys are now my favorite allied health professionals. I'll be honest with you. Pod podiatry is up there now is my favorite. Um, I've been approached by another podiatrist in New South Wales to do a talk as well. So um, podiatry, definitely my favorite. But um, for you guys, I think it's massive benefit in this stuff. You guys need to um, become a little bit more holistic. I mean, you don't, have to pro, you, know, you don't have to do gym programs, but stuff like this is simple and effective that you guys can use. Big bang for your buck, really lo lots of transference. So I kind of wanted to show you that. Um, don't worry about the fads, just stick to the basics and you guys will be fine. If you want to know more information about um, my company, what we do, um, I actually get um, hired a lot to run like workshops, stuff like that. Um, I'm hired by physios, osteos, chiro, stuff like that, and I actually come, and I'm still their staff, so it's obviously not half an hour, it's about eight, seven hours where I just upskill it on basic patterns. Um, and if you want to know more about my company, go to Woodford Sports Science Consulting. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitter, um, we're on Instagram, all the uh, social medias. If you guys want to email me, it's christian at woodfordssc.com. Um, just quickly while you guys got me there, do you guys have uh, any Q&A that you want me to answer? If you're not comfortable doing it now, you can come see me at the end. Anyone at all? No? Nope. Yeah. Uh, not in my experience, no. But you still got to be careful, obviously, if you've got, if you've got someone with sciatica. I've had sciatica before, um, but no, nah, not really. Just got to, and that's, that's another thing is kind of using common sense, like uh, communication. Uh, is it flaring them up? If it gives them pain, you're not going to do it. So um, we kind of use that with rehab at Woodford is just don't do something stupid. That's our kind of saying. Um, use common sense because these days common sense is not that common. So as much as possible, we've got to communicate with them. How do you feel about that? And that's where you're going to get feedback. Any more questions? Uh, if you don't feel comfortable, come see me at the end. I want to thank um, you guys, first of all, for coming, because I know it's the end of day two. I really do appreciate it. Um, and thanks, Lucy, for like, getting me to come here. Hopefully, I come back next year. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it, something different. Um, and once again, here's all areas you, if you want to contact me. And um, if you want to talk to me at the end, come see me. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you to the two young kids. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.